Hey, what's up guys? It's Clinton here, and today I'm going to show you two exercises to start learning sweet picking. The first exercise is simple, and it'll help you get down the mechanics of sweet picking. And then the second one is a little more practical. So when you're first learning how to sweet pick, I think there's three important points to focus on. The first one being the shape that you're doing with your fretting hand. Two being the sweeping motion or picking motion with your picking hand. And then the third one would be proper muting of the strings, which is something that you're going to be using both hands for. So I think this first exercise is a really good starting point because it helps you focus on the picking technique and the muting of the strings, but without being too complicated for the fretting hand. So here's the first exercise that I'm talking about, and it's really not that exciting sounding, but I do think it's a really good stepping stone for learning the cooler shapes. So basically all this exercise is is one simple sequence and then we're just moving it up the neck to make it less boring when you practice. So as with any technique, you're going to want to start really slow and make sure you're getting everything right before you speed it up. The speed of sweep picking comes from the efficient sweeping motion instead of individually picking each string. So when you start to focus on this exercise, really focus on doing that sweeping motion rather than doing individual downstrokes or upstrokes. So I think one of the most difficult parts about sweep picking is the turnaround stage when you get to the bottom or top of your sweep shape. In this case, we're doing the sweeping motion on the first three notes, and then the turnaround is going to be when we go from the fifth to the eighth fret on the E string. You'll notice that eighth fret is an upstroke, and that's what I mean by the turnaround. So we've been focusing on the sweeping motion and also that turnaround stage, but the other big thing to focus on is properly muting the strings. When I'm practicing sweep picking, I find it's really important to try to mute all the unused strings with my fretting hand only. So basically after you play each note, you're lifting up that fretting finger and that's going to mute the string without even having to palm mute with your right hand. Muting the strings with your fretting hand will allow the notes to ring out more and avoid that overmuted sweep sound where you can't really hear the individual notes being played. So as far as practicing this exercise, I find that it's helpful to practice on both a clean setting and a distorted setting. I like to practice on a clean setting because it's very dynamic, which makes it harder to get a consistent sound with each of your notes. On the other hand, practicing on a compressed high gain tone is going to make note consistency a little bit easier, but at the same time it's going to really amplify all that string noise if you're not muting properly. I also find that using the bridge pickup is usually a little less forgiving, so that's what I like to practice on. And then when you switch to the neck pickup, sometimes it sounds a little better. So once you're feeling comfortable with that first exercise, then we can move on to some more usable shapes. I feel like the two shapes that I use the most when I'm sweep picking are the major shape and the minor shape. The two shapes that I'm going to show today are both five string shapes starting on the A string. So just like with that first exercise, we're doing a sweeping motion and then we have a turnaround point on the high E string. So let's just break down this major shape first. So when you're trying to sweep both up and down these shapes, the turnaround point can be pretty difficult. So just like with that first exercise, we're doing a downward sweeping motion, carrying us through the E string and then plucking up with an upstroke. But if we wanna make the transition to go back down that arpeggio, we're gonna need to do a downstroke on the ninth fret and then kind of rotate our wrist to do that upstroke sweeping motion down the rest of the arpeggio. So down through, upstroke, downstroke, and then kind of rotate your wrist and do an upstroke sweeping motion for those last four notes. A 
Over the years, I've naturally incorporated a pull-off on the descending portion, so I'll just compare those two right now for you. So here's what the entire thing picked. And then here's it with the pull-off on that high E string. With the pull-off approach, you're doing that upstroke turnaround period and then immediately going to just that upward sweeping motion to finish off the shape. So thinking back to when I first learned how to sweep pick, I remember practicing at least a week or so on just these three shapes before moving on to anything more technical. As with anything that seems really difficult to learn, I think it's most helpful to break it down into smaller chunks. So that's what I would recommend doing by practicing that first exercise and then moving on to the other two shapes. If you enjoyed this video, then be on the lookout for a follow-up video where I'm going to show my favorite sweeping shapes and also some exercises to help maintain your sweep picking when you get rusty.